All right, welcome back to season two of our show. We got a beautiful one for you. It's breakfast, southern style, center cut pork chops. We're gonna show you how to get this seasoned up and add on to the cooker. Stick around, don't go anywhere. So today it's pork loin, and we're using a gigantic cut of this pork loin. Now I love shopping around the holiday time because around the holiday times you get stuff like this. Usually you find these about that size about half of this, this is 10 pounds. And what we'll do is we'll start to cut this up. We're gonna minyong it. Uh, basically a French word for small tiny pieces. Now this is also used for pork chop too as well. Most people aren't used to looking at this the whole way so I'm gonna take that half there, just put it there. Actually I'm gonna put this back because we're gonna use some vinegar just to clean this, distilled vinegar. What I do is just open the pores of the meat with that. Kind of good old school style of cleaning the meat. I still use it to this day. I use it on my chicken and basically all my meats. So never be afraid to use the vinegar. Works out well. Just a little bit and discard the stuff that you have here because you had your fingers in it and you got it contaminated now. So off to the side that goes. Now, center cut pork chops, I'm gonna turn this off to the side, is what basically this is. So what we'll do is just, we're gonna cut chops about this size. Now we're serving breakfast today, and we're gonna serve these in a very nice fashion. We're just gonna clean up some of the fat, just like that. And onto the tray, that one goes. And just judge them out, cut them like that, takes no time. And the nice part about this, around the holiday time, if you get large pieces like this, this was about $2.49 a pound, so very inexpensive way of eating. And this is a lot of meat. So let's just cut around here. I don't cut too much of this fat off because once it grills up, it really grills up beautifully. And that fat burns up and you get a nice crispy char around here, as you'll see. So we're gonna cut these off. Now, if you have family or friends come over to your house around the holiday time, and let's say you're on a budget, great go-to meal. Now everybody thinks that Christmas time has to be around the holiday time. Hanukkah or Christmas or anything like that has to be, or any holiday that you do celebrate in your family has to be uh, expensive. It really doesn't. So just put that off to the side like that. And things are pretty tight today. Things are very expensive. So this is a good way, if you guys don't wanna do red meat for the holidays or you're on a budget for the holidays, this is a great way to feed your family. You can do several things with this piece of meat, as I'm gonna show you in about two seconds. Let's just get finished cutting this off to the side we go. And just in no time, the meat just piles up. And there you go. If you're by yourself, just freeze it. Let's get this off to the side. Just freeze it and put it in your freezer. So here's a large cut of this. If you wanted to, you can stuff this. So you can take this. Now today we're gonna to cut the whole thing up and, and basically center cut pork chop. But you can cut this in the middle like this. You could roll it, you could unroll it, and just roll it right back up. And you'd have a stuffed roast. Or you can go like this. Let's cut it in half. You can put a hole in the middle here and stuff it with a bunch of things, wrap it in bacon, go on the grill. There's so many things you could do with a piece of meat like this. I'm gonna go like this. And if I wanted to, I can take this piece of meat and I can cut a hole right in the center here and I can stuff that. And I could just set it on my smoker just like that and you can stuff it with anything you want. So the ideas are just endless with a piece of meat like this. If you wanted to save some of this fat, 
you would take a piece of meat like this, take all that fat, and right through the grinder it goes. Put some sausage seasoning in there, open up one of these guys and stuff the sausage seasoning down here and smoke it just like that onto the cooker. So there's just so many things you can do with a piece of meat like this. You can even pound it out and fry it. So it's a very beautiful piece of meat to work with. If you know what you're doing, it'll feed a lot of people as I'm showing you. And the fat on here, it's not too crazy or the silver skin. It's a pretty lean piece of meat. It cooks up really quick. There's no bone. So you really gotta watch it. But this piece of meat should take about seven minutes to cook. Maybe 10 minutes if you cook them this thick like that, the way I'm, I'm doing them. And that's it. So we're gonna get the chopping on this. And we're gonna meet you right back here for the seasoning. So stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, so our center cut pork chops, they're nice and cut up. Now we're serving six today, and like I said, you could see all of this beautiful meat here. And I mean, one of these, there's 16 chops here, one of these would definitely feed somebody well, inch and a half thick, almost two inches on these, these cuts, and you don't need much. So we're gonna do six today. And the rest of them you can just put in your freezer, vacuum seal them down, which I'm gonna do. And then you can have them for another day because they're all nice and cut up. So we're gonna put these off to the side. We're just showing you six today. We're having six people over for breakfast, so that's what we're rolling with. Right here I have a rub. Garlic powder, onion powder, a uh, little paprika in there. And just make up your own. I'm not sure what's in this rub. I just kind of make them. I don't actually um, there's no salt in here so I just kind of eyeball it out and I kind of roll with it I surprised my own self so I don't really know a hundred percent what's in here I just throw it all in as long as there's no salt in there you can't go wrong so surprise yourself and you can make up your own rubs I'm gonna flip these over but the base is usually garlic powder onion powder and I just go from there Season these guys up and they cook really quick and we're doing breakfast today and that's what we want we want to cook these quick we want to cook these hot and we want to cook them fast because we don't want to dry them out and a piece of meat like this you'll dry them out quick so the hotter the grill the better infrareds work great on stuff like this and just a hot fire or a, a ceramic cooker and this pretty much what you want to cook these on. And you want to roll these probably around six, 700 degrees roll gold today. Now restaurant broilers, they get up to about 500 degrees. And that's why restaurant broilers are good for stuff like this. And if you cook these at a low temperature, you're gonna lose all your juice, you're gonna dry them out. All right, so we got those seasoned. Let's give it a little oil. It's gonna make them, the rub stick to it. And it's going to make them just burn up quick on the grill. Set the color, get that nice char on there, and you're not going to get all that powder in your mouth if you don't oil them. And that oil will make these release easy from the grill, and it's going to make that powder just stay on the meat. So a lot of times, a lot of people, they season their meat, and they take something like that, and they hit the grill with it. If I go like that, go like that, it's all on my hand. So oil it in, just like that. You oil your meat before it hits the grill so you don't have to use seasoning. You just always have to oil your meat. Don't oil the grill, oil your meat. Back in the days, they used to oil the grill. Never understood that. It's a lot easier to oil the meat. You oil the grill, you can start a grease fire because you're oiling the grill. You're dumping a bunch of oil and grease on the grill. So you're kind of dirtying up your cooker. And uh, I, don't, I haven't seen that in, in years, but hopefully people stopped oiling their grill. And if you're out there oiling your grill still, don't oil your grill. All right, that's it. 
We'll meet you out onto the cooker. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. She's rolling about 700 degrees. We're going to get a nice sear onto these center cuts. Alright, I'm going to close up. I'm going to kill this side. Shut that side down. I got that side nice and hot. And we're going to put them over to the other side and let them cook in direct. We'll meet you back here. Don't go anywhere. All right, let's get these quarter turned. We're just going to hatch them. Quarter turn. Get some nice grill marks on them. Just like that. Give them about another two minutes on that side and that's it. I mean, you're right back here. Time to flip these. They're cooking nice. That's what you want. Get them nice and charred up. We're gonna go about two minutes on this side, and I'm gonna go to that side afterwards. Meet you right back here. All right, so we're about six minutes in, and we're gonna get them over to the other side. Off the fire. Now this side is turned off completely. I'm just going to char these up a little bit on the sides. That is hot. And I'll let that go just a little bit more before I put it to the other side because I'm not really happy with that char. So we'll just put that one like that. We'll put that to that side, and we'll let this go for about five minutes. We'll meet you back here. Don't go anywhere. Time to get this off of here. Beautiful. So right here I made some caramelized onions. Now I did this inside, and what I'll do to keep these moist is I'm gonna put them right into the caramelized onions. This way when they start to release their juice, it goes right into the onion. And then we'll show you how to plate up from there. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, our meat is resting inside those beautiful onions. And why that's resting, no breakfast is complete in the South without how many grits. So let's show you how to get this on. So right here in this pot, we have about a third way full of water. We're gonna use butter, salt and pepper to taste. And of course, our how many grits. Just use enough salt and pepper for your taste. It doesn't have to be anybody else's, but just taste it as you go along. And we're gonna show you how to get the grits done. Onto the cooker we go. So our water has come to a boil. Now we boiled down the butter that was in there. And the nice part about this, you could use frozen butter. It doesn't really make a difference because you're going to cook it down anyway. The grits, they're going to go in after it starts to boil. And when you put them in, you're going to start stirring to get to the consistency that you want. So once you put them in, don't go too much. Just kind of stir it and feel it out. What I find is if you read the instructions on the back of the box, it never comes out right. I've never got it right, so this is how I do it. And I'm a chef by trade, so <laughs> instructions. Go Quaker. All right, so just keep stirring, just like that. 
Now on the box it says it takes about 10 to 15 to 20 minutes to get this done. In my experience, I've done them in about 10. And I just keep the heat on high and just keep adding. Just keep stirring and adding. I'm just gonna keep just keep playing with it and look at it and wait for it to thicken up. If you go too much, you gotta add more water and you'll need a bigger pot. So I'm just trying to get the right consistency now. And just keep stirring it. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And keep stirring. At this point, I'm gonna drop my heat back about halfway. And just keep stirring. I dropped it back because I'm on an electric stove. If I was on a gas stove, I'd let it go a little bit longer, but electric takes a little bit more time to slow down than gas. So just keep stirring. Take a look, see what you have. This could be very deceiving because when you do this, it'll just all of a sudden just you'll have a ton of grits in here. So just keep doing what I'm doing. Just keep stirring, feeling it out, and you'll feel it start to thicken up on you. Now I feel it's getting a little hard to stir, not hard, but just some resistance. And at this point, I'm gonna add just a little bit more grits. If you've ever made polenta, it's almost identical. Now what I'm going to do is just, that's it. I'm going to drop it back from the heat, lift up a little bit. And just keep stirring. And now I'm going to drop my eye back all the way on low, real low. And as you can see, it, it's starting to thicken up quick. So I'm just going to keep stirring it. Hold it up off the eye and just keep stirring it and let it come to the consistency that you're looking for. And it's almost like a creamy consistency. And when you pour it out, it should just stay on your plate and not run anywhere. But it shouldn't clump on your plate. All right, we're gonna finish this up, then we're gonna plate up and we'll show you how to bring this meal together. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, here we are, season two, chopping block. Once more, let's see what we got. Look at those. Just gonna let all that nice steam and juice flow right in there. So let's get one of these out of here. And we're just gonna take the biggest one and we're gonna cut into it just to show you where we're at. I'm just gonna cut it right down the middle. Now this is the biggest one. And there you have it. Perfect. That's how you want it. Not overdone. It's got a slight, slight bit of pink to it. And it's perfect. All right. What we'll do is we're going to plate this up. We're just going to take it, put it back in here. We'll put this back together. Now this is how you want to serve breakfast. Just for now, I'm going to get my onions out of here, move them to the side. Now I'm going to actually take this and put it back off in here just to get some nice juice in the front of here and just spin it around and that nice juice just like that. And then I'm going to put it back in. This is what you want to do. Just get it nice and onioned up. Put it back in here. Like that. 
and we're going to get these nice onions up here. I think I've changed my mind on plating, so what we'll do, let's put this back. You can always change your mind on plating. I'm going to bring our grits in. Now, this is the consistency of those grits. This is how you want them, so I think I'm just going to lay them down like that. Now I'm going to take my pork chop, I'm going to bring it back, put it in here, just like that, center mass. Now I'm going to put my onions on top. Took a second to get it right, but now it's right. I'm going to put that down. And the topper on here, I'm going to hit it with a little fried egg right on the top of there. There it is. Now, can have a nice southern breakfast here without a beautiful piece of cornbread on the side. So we're just going to put a nice piece of cornbread right on the side of there. And there you have it. All right. We're going to get situated, clean up. We're going to meet you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Alright, there it is. Grilled center cut chops with caramelized smothered onions. What a beautiful egg on top. How many grits? And cornbread. Now we're going to leave a link in that description to that beautiful cornbread so you can see how that cornbread was made. If you like this video, and more videos are about to happen, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Again, thank you. We enjoyed having you. With no further ado, gotta get that little bit of master taste there. <laughs>